To launch Apophysis, double click the icon. Apophysis will automatically generate a batch of random flames. If it's your first time, chances are that you have more variations ticked than you need and the flame probably doesn't look very useful. To change this, go into your tools and choose settings or control P if you want to get there quickly. The first thing you'll want to do is go into the variations panel and clear all the variations and then tick linear 3D. The next thing that you'll want to do is go into your general tab and check that you have your PNG transparency enabled. In the random tab you'll want to have a minimum of two and a maximum of three transforms. If you did decide to create flames with four symmetry that would also be done in the random tab. You can then go control B to generate a batch of random flames. Choose any flame that looks interesting and it doesn't matter which and click on the FX button. From here it's possible to edit your flame by rotating and zooming your transforms until you see something that you like. This process can take a little bit of time. Sometimes it's worth your while to reset one of the transforms. To do this select the transform tab and choose Reset Transform. You can then move it and scale it. If you're wanting to be able to see all of the transforms in this area, just double click on the black space. At this point, it can be useful to add some other variations. So choose one of your transforms, go into the Variation tab and choose a variation. It's a little bit awkward for me to show you this simply because I'm trying to keep most of the things in the camera. Spherical variation is normally an excellent choice. If you take a small amount of spherical, such as 0.1, it often gives quite pleasing results. You can go as high as you need to, and you can then return to your transform and rotate, zoom, and move around until you see something that you would wish to render. After a fair bit of playing, I developed a fractal that looks like this. You can use the preview window or your main window to see how things are going. This side of the screen is tragically blank, so to fix that problem, I'm going to rotate my flame by using my camera tool. I can also move it either by sliding the various scales or by dragging in the actual flame. I can change the scale by editing the number in the scale box. One of the most useful parts of Apophysis is the ability to easily change the colour. You can double click on the gradient to randomise it or you can use one of the preset gradients There's also the ability to rotate the color to increase the saturation, to increase the brightness, and if you wish, you can blur gradients further. It's worthwhile taking the time to play until you find a gradient that suits you. Another option is to install gradients, and you can then use the gradient browser to choose a gradient that you've used with success before. Clicking Control shift n will randomize your gradient. You can do the same thing by using the flame menu and choosing randomize. Sorry, it's Control alt n This is all still the rainbow gradient, but as you can see, by randomizing it, I can get to different bits of my gradient. I can, of course, rotate, and if it turns to custard and I need to reset, I can just calculate my colors back to what they were before. 
after playing a little bit more with the fractal that I generated and zooming in, this is the result. The next step is to save the parameters. Simply click on the save icon and choose an appropriate name for your fractal. I've gone ahead and called mine Cold Textured Ocean. I'll copy the name and put it in the destination as well so that my fractal is called Cold Textured Ocean dot flame and I've got a separate folder called my parameters folder in my hypothesis folder. If you want to change where it's saving your parameters to, you can do so by clicking on the browse button and then choose OK. The final step is to render the fractal. To do that, you click on the cog and this will invoke the render flame dialog box. You can edit the size and bigger is better. You'll notice that I always opt to save my fractals as transparent.png files. The filter radius I choose is 0.4, density 1000, oversample 2. Feel free to play with these values. And once you're ready, hit start. Assuming you have enough memory, it will tell you how long the render will take. And the next step is to grab a cup of coffee or something and wait for the rendering process to complete. Once the graphic is rendered, you can open it in the graphics imaging software of your choice. I use PaintShop Pro, but it's equally easy to use Photoshop, GIMP, which is free, or even Paint.net. As long as your image software supports layers, you're good to go. The first step is to go into the Layers panel and make a new layer. I'll then take the back layer to the back, apologies for the misspelling, use my bucket tool to fill it. And at this point you can save your image and you can sign it as well. And there you have an image that you can now either use as your desktop wallpaper or you can upload to an image sharing site such as Flickr and so on. One thing you might wish to do is experiment with inverting the colours. Often they look better on a black background compared with a white background. You can also invert the colours of your signature or invert the colours of the actual fractal with varying results. Hopefully you found this introduction to Apophysis useful. Obviously Apophysis is quite a versatile program and you can use it to create a lot more fractals than just this basic textured look.